Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Senzo, and joining me today is Silverquill. I don't have a gambling problem. I can stop Overwatch loot boxes whenever I want. I just don't want to. <laughs> it's okay, man. It's okay. Overwatch 2 is coming. Ah, yes, right. Where it's PvE. Yeah, so no loot boxes needed. Okay. Oh, Norman, your optimism is professionally nice. <laughs> <laughs> and also joining us today is the Terra. I am a red and black OC, so that's a free pass to pass the gate. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess. You know, if Overwatch 2 comes out, I'm going to try and buy it on PlayStation 4 or console. And I'm going to join you guys. Yeah, we, we can PvE our way, yo. Woo. But Overwatch later, ponies now. So in today's episode review, we are going to do, or we are going to review, uh, the My Little Pony comic, Nightmare Nights, issue number one. In this issue, Princess Luna and Stygian travel to an alternate world and encounter a bizarre and mysterious evil. Okay. Anyway, uh, before we hit in, our first impressions are in order and silver. What do you think? It's a series focusing on Luna. Luna, 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 Luna. Yay. So, of course, I'm instantly invested. But uh, this draws on a lot of elements from the, sh- from the show and creates a very unique story and even uh, changes my perception of past comics, which is no small thing. So, I consider this a very strong start. I'll get into the details, especially the villain later. But I just really enjoyed this beginning. All right, all right. And what about you, Tara? I really enjoyed this from the beginning to end. Like, I'm, I'm actually curious on what... I mean, I'm, I'm kind of boring here, not to spoil anything, but I'm kind of curious and I want to see the next comic. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you, you can always uh, read it on your own leisurely time. There's no stopping. Yes. Yeah. But as for me, I, I like this comic. This comic was a lot of fun, especially when we get to see the cover page for this one. We get to see awesomeness, man, like Nightmare Nights. Woo! Much scariness. And this came out when now? October 10th. Yay! A few months before Halloween. <laughs> so A few months and, before Halloween? Sorry, days before Halloween. My bad. Or a few months before Christmas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, if you have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the comic because it's a lot of fun. So anyway, we start off the comic with Twilight. She's organizing. Yay, much awesomeness. But it's not really real because she's dreaming all about this. And Princess Luna is stalking her in her dreams. And she enjoys watching her sort those books. Mm. Sort those books, Twilight. Yeah. But Duty calls... And she is called to Apple Bloom. She's having a nightmare. Oh no. And Alpha Bloom is worried about her responsibility as a cutie mark crusader, helping ponies with their cutie marks, and also the Apple family farm. She's an apple, and harvest is coming soon. And she's having problems. So Princess Luna comes in and just tells her, Go talk to your parents. Sort it out. You'll do fine. And she pops into another dream and this dream is somewhat familiar but not really sometimes dreams can be memories and in this scenario here she pops into Stygian's dream and Stygian is fighting the Pony of Shadows the alternate version best say that you guys go home and read the Legends of Magic series is a somehow continuation for this one not really but still it's a lot of fun with that, Stygian says, how did you get here? This is dangerous, you should go. And the Pony of Shadows is talking to Princess Luna and somehow goes her into saving her sister and whatnot. This is strange. I'm going to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think? Well, the, the massive amounts of continuity on display. It's just glorious. Yay. All right, so starting up, watching Twilight Organize. This calls back to Friends Forever, I believe it was 14? Really, you know? Yeah. She likes to watch Twilight Organize, which sounds maybe just a little creepy when you're, you know, your princess is spying on your dreams, but it's an innocent enough activity. I also feel kind of bad for Luna, because anytime someone sees her, they're like, wait, 
Am I awake? Is this a dream? Oh, is this the real life? Or is this, this just, just fantasy? fantasy? Caught in a landslide. <laughs> okay, you stop. Escape from reality. <laughs> so, and then of course there's the the memory dream for Stygian where it's a memory, and this is what changed my perception of uh, what was it? The annual comic that focused on the the pillars. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just sort of a victory lap. Just saying, yeah, we we completed uh, the Legends of Equestria, have one more adventure that really just reinforces what we'll already see, we've already seen in the show. But no, it was actually lay, laying the groundwork for Nightmare Nights. So my appreciation for that issue has grown as a result of this issue. True that, true that. I have no issue with that issue. And there's no issue on me. For me. And... And believe me, the the history of this alternate universe, Pony of Shadows, will me will mean a tremendous amount. Uh, it's going to be one of the staples of this series. Spoilers. All right, then, no problem, no problem. And Tara, what about you? I mean, I can't really say much for the first half because I mean, I didn't know that Luna spying on Twilight organizing was a continuity thing. I thought, you know, she just likes watching Twilight. I guess. <laughs> oh my. And then the Pony of Shadows, when I first saw it, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe it's the original Pony of Shadows, but with a different color. But after hearing that it's an alternative one, now I'm like, okay, I guess this is another thing I should look back at because I don't read a lot of the comics. Did Terror not join us for this one? I'm guessing uh, no, right? No, I think that was before before he joined us. Oh, okay. The p it was probably years ago when I wasn't even part of this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but still, a lot of good things, a lot of good things. But yeah, um... Yeah, that you sh you should catch up, man. Like, uh, reading the Legends of Magic series is a lot of fun. Uh, there's a what you gonna call this? Uh, trade paperback for it, if I remember right. So yay, worth worth watching. But anywho, I'm gonna carry on. Wait, watching or reading? Reading, <laughs> reading. My bad, sorry. <laughs> but anywho, carrying on. Ten minutes later, in the waking world, Stygian and Luna meet up. And tries to solve the problem. And here's the part where I just wonder, why does Luna care so much? But I, I guess we'll pop that question or have that answer later on. So they go into a creepy basement that only Starswell knows. And they hop into a mirror to the alternate dimension that kidnap Celestia and Luna in the Legends of Magic series or in the annual, I forgot. But anywho, once they hop in there, the place is not the same anymore. It looked like Robotnik slept on Casino Night Zone in that area. What? This is a Kingdom Hearts uh, world. Uh, still, I don't know. But anywho, um, they wait in line because there's a line to go into the casino. Whoa. And the measure of how to get in is if you're good or bad. So if you're good, you go down the hole. If you're pure evil, you get to go into the casino. Yeah. So the guards ask the dragon. And the dragon says that, don't you notice how the line was shorter? I ate three ponies. And he's evil. Ooh. So... Stygian's turn, he pops up and asks the guards to ask him the question. And the guards just see him, oh, look at this goody two-shoe. And Stygian just says, I'm the pony of shadow, I reign shadow over my world and uh, try to corrupt people. And wow, he's pure evil. Oh, so he gets to go in. And with Luna, this one, I got no idea how to say. But anywho, she just says that I am Luna, I am evil. And Sijin says, you have to try harder than that. And Luna just says, okay, I'm Nightmare Moon. That's not a word. And look at me, I'm pure evil. And I'm very, very evil. <laughs> and yep, it is. She, she is evil. She is evil. And the guard just says, yo, lady, cool, cool your jets on the dramatics. Leave some for us. So she gets in and, well, it's surprised by what they see because it's a casino full of evil people. What? 
And I'm going to pause here. Tara, what do you think, man? All right, so I do like the gate with uh, pure evil and goody two shoes. Although it kind of reminds me back to that one SpongeBob episode where he's like, "Welcome to Salty Splatoon. How tough are you?" And then there's like that one guy who's like, "I drank, I ate a bowl of nails without any milk." And like, Jesus, the dragon reminded me of that scene. I don't know why. It just reminds me of that. Oh no! You are saying that reminds me of that one scene where there's a t- the tough version of SpongeBob and. Yeah, there's a there's a real version of Tough SpongeBob, and the other version of him is in a clown suit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was it dumb. Just reminds me of that. Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah. But I do like though the the um, I do like the idea that the pure evil and the goody two shoes try, and then when they try to get in, they just basically talk about their past and. Luna's just like, uh, I'm Luna. And then it's slowly going to Goody Two Shoes. But once you mention that she's Nightmare Moon and she will haunt their dreams and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden it goes straight to Pure Evil. And then as soon as they walk in, you see all of these past villains and like uh, some I'm probably not familiar with, but I do, I know some that are in that page. And actually, now that we're on top of that page, I do like the artwork and how it's like such a huge page showing all these villains on different floors. Yep, true that, true that. And Silver, what do you think, man? I- I'm sure you and I see a lot of awesome villains in here. We do, and the thing is, you can have any villain because there's always an alternate world where they didn't reform. Okay. I.e., the Starlight Glimmer and Sunset Shimmer. Or there's a T-Rex and a Scorpan yeah. wandering around. True, true. And also, um, uh, Wolf. No, no, Wallflower. Uh, the camp guide for Everfree. I forgot. Glorious Daisy? Yeah, she's there too, and Maleficent. Maleficent. And here's the thing. Tony Fleek, he said, he put out the call on Twitter for bronies, I list some villains. I need to draw villains. <laughs> and the fandom responded with gusto. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that is a phrase, yes. So, well done, bronies. You fixed it. Yeah, and I see Katra. Oh, you mean Katrina? Uh, Katra from uh, She-Ra. He- He-Man? Oh, She-Man. I'm surprised you guys didn't point out the smooths or Grogar in that page. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's that too. But there's also, okay, uh, you know what? I'm going to hold my tongue for a bit until Silver finishes his yeah. thoughts. Sorry. Well, let's back it up a little because, one, this the, the question is, why is Luna doing this? And in her mind, this is Celestia in trouble, even if it's not her Celestia, quote, quote. Uh, it is Celestia is in trouble, and it shows. I think maybe a little bit of the the guilt she feels over what happened between them. She wants to to save her sister in any form. So, and then they've come to this Kingdom Hearts. It really does look like something I'd see in Kingdom Hearts. True that. Kept expecting the world title to appear. <laughs> oh, and yeah, and then you hear the music, and then like oh yeah. <laughs> But the big thing for me is is indeed this scale, because I'm not a big fan of saying that good and evil are easily measurable quantifiers. It's like when uh, whenever Twilight says, oh, the elements turned Luna good again. I mean, what? You just swap your, your morality energies or, or, you know, go in for a tune up? Eh, sorry, your princess is going to need a complete overhaul. She's pure evil. Yeah, no, it's the character, the D&D character reset. <laughs> So, but one thing I really like about this is that Luna and Stygian are able to to get through it, not because they themselves are pure evil, but because, well, they have memories. I think this thing uh, gauges your capacity to shut off limiters and uh, and to indulge in uh, in a- in actions that are we would normally filter out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luna, in particular, when she says that uh, going all nightmare moon billowing drama, it feels great. It's you, You're cutting restraints. And, of course, a casino is going to want c- people or ponies who are able to turn off their restraints and hit the slots. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, crack those booster packs. And it's true, you can spend all the time on the, just one page. There are the Thunder Gremlins. There's one of the spiders from the ver- from the return of Queen Chrysalis. Yeah. There's, of course, Queen Chrysalis. Uh-huh. We're hang- hanging out with, uh, uh, who now, um, Garble. Yes. Like, what? <laughs> 
and good eyes towards Aaron spotting Grogar so far in the upper corner and with a light shining in front of him. Yep. yep. And also, like, all it's... that trash I ate. <laughs> yeah, but here's here's it's... sorry. Go ahead. It's also G one Grogar. Oh, G one Grogar. Really? Oh yeah. E. I can see this the dots lining his bell yeah. and the shape of his horns. <laughs> and here's here's the other thing. Um, Rarity. There's two versions of her. Like what? Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, there. Well, there was Nightmare Rarity, which was the second IDW arc. Mm-hmm. And then there's a Corrupted Rarity from Ponies of Dark Water. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't make sense. They, they cannot exist two versions of Rarity in the same place. Unless this is a parallel universe where Ponies can come to, you know what, I'm just going to give up. Oh, Babsy's I'm there. I'm just thankful that I'm just thankful that there's no red or black OCs because you know we don't ha- we're not that evil just because we're red and black. Um, Tara, look right. next to Thunderling to her right. That doesn't count. <laughs> this is not red and black. It's just black <laughs> with a red outline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boys. Oh, I'm sorry, Tara. You've been caught red outline. Yep. Oh, by the way, Silva, um, there's another evil on the second page. Let's see here. The other evils. Let's see here. Next. I see oh, it. Oh, yep. Hello, Angel. <laughs> oh, who knew Tony Fleece was evil, too? <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's a. Uh, oh, and Cleopatra from uh, the uh, Shadow Lock arc. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the Smooths, who's still looking quite dapper. Yep. Okay, you know what? I'm going to pause here. And sorry, I'm gonna stop that and gonna continue on, because we could just talk about hours for the characters we just see. This is so cool. I love this kind of thing. It's like I Spy. <laughs> anyway, um, where's Waldo, the <laughs> evil edition? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, as we carry on, we see that Luna and Stijun are trying to find where they are keeping Celestia, and there's a diamond dog, uh, calling them out and. The well, princess is expecting them, so yay, they go up to the elevator, and you know what? This is just too easy. There's a trap going on, so we see more villains, and once they reach the penthouse, they see oh, Princess Celestia is there. Oh no, Luna rushes ahead and is trapped in a cage. Oh no, that's terrible. Oh no. And we are introduced to the real villain of the show, Princess Ares, the lord of chaos for that world, and her pet, Daybreaker. Ooh, much evil. And she planned all this one out, uh, going into Stygian's dream, uh, attracting Luna, bringing her into her world, and sucking away her dream powers. Oh no, the horror! Ooh! And uh, Princess Luna asks what she's going to do with such power. And she says she's going to auction it off in three days to the highest bidder. And she's going to, well, leash chaos in that sense. So, yay, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But suddenly, a cage flies towards the pair. And, well, Stygian's not out. He is still active and uh, saved the day. So their escape route is to do something that Flash Magnus would have done. And that is, do something brave and dumb and hope it works out. Yay. I'm gonna pause here for a bit. So what do you think, guys? Silva? I love Eris. I love her design. I love her philosophy. She's got. We're going to expand on that a little bit more. Uh Here's the funny thing. Even though she is a Lord of Chaos, a cousin of Discord, so to speak, she's not a Draconiquess. Mm-hmm. And I find that enjoyable. Uh, Jeremy Wheatley, uh, he based her design on the Saramanic. Saramanic? It's a mythical bird from uh, Marat. Oh, boy, I'll butcher this pronunciation. <laughs> Maranao, an island in the Philippines. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a lot of legends surrounding it. But mostly it has to do with fortune. In the legends, it's mostly good fortune, but here it's more, well, chance. How fitting then that she runs a casino. (laughs) 
And and one of the the counter arguments that happen that I've seen online is like, oh, but she is a composite. Look, she's got ram horns, and it, this is kind of an out, but it's a it's also a legitimate question. Have you ever seen a Saramanic? How do you know it doesn't have those parts? True that. And here's here's another little bad thing about I'm not gonna say bad, but a foul on the wiki page. Uh, clicking on her name on the wiki page will bring you to her quote unquote character bio. But she is labeled under a draconicus. So foul. I call foul on that. Yes. Birds of a feather flock together. It is a little sad that Luna goes in to save and is suddenly then like, Sister, help me. I'm here to save you. Oh no, I need saving. <laughs> but this is the bird and the princess is where there's something about that dang crown. I think I think someone inscribed kidnap me on the inside of it. I think that's more of a princess thing. A lot of princesses tend to get kidnapped. Indeed. Oh, true that. Although there is the argument that a princess represents the land. And by taking hope by assaulting her freedom, uh, the villain is in turn depriving the land. That's also why uh, in a lot of classic stories, especially video games, the hero saves the princess and they say, oh, she's accepted him, he will be king. It's because the land accept itself accepts the hero. Ah, that makes sense. Like the Mario games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But at the same time, we end the story right there because... Really, a young hero has no idea how to rule or how to be a good husband. And we want to end on a happy note so we get away as fast as possible. All right, all right. And but in this case, well, Stygian is saving Luna, so perhaps he's making up for his past mistakes. Probably. And getting to be a bit of the hero himself. Luna's not going to date or marry him, that we know. Mm -hmm. But she's still accepting him as Equestria is accepting him back. And that is cool. No. Right? And I also like Eris's philosophy of how she engineers ma uh, chaos. Take this great power and just chuck it into another universe and see what happens. Shake it up. See where the pieces fall. At least at first. We'll learn very quickly that Eris has a double standard. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she is an interesting villain. She is an interesting villain. Uh, Tara, what about you, my friend? Well, I I actually do like the introduction of Eris and how she's not a Draconicus, but how she's a cousin of Discord, and she's all more serious and all fun and games like Discord is, where he makes the road into soap or a chocolate rain, although chocolate rain would be very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but I also like, like, with the page, the introduction, I like how Daybreaker has that fire in her eyes, you know? Like, I'm so evil, I have fire in my eyes now. <laughs> But then I also like too how the uh, Luna's a bit helpless because uh, she she relies on Celestia. But then after Stitchian comes in, he's like, "I will save the day this time." And then <laughs> that one line just gets me. It was like, "Do something brave and dumb, and hope it works." <laughs> <laughs> Somehow he did. Somehow he did. But yeah, I don't really have much to say. I just like the introduction of Eris. And actually, while we're on the topic of Eris, how did she get the staff from the Storm King? <laughs> Uh, that's something different, right? It's not the same staff, oh. although it is, it is, it shares the name. It's the staff from another dimension. Mm -hmm. True. Oh, uh, by the or way, I, I'm not sure if it's an animation error or not, but when you, sorry, uh, when Ares first appears, the staff is different. And in the second panel, instead of a sharp crystal, it becomes a crystal orb. Who knows? Maybe it, maybe it grows. It's like... Your orb is now filled. Oh, no. Please swap in a new orb to continue oh, my, your my, malicious act. My bad, my bad. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's the animation for this one is not clear because I see that there's a <laughs> while sucking Luna's power, a orb appears and she takes it away and it's still there. Like this is just confusing. But anyway, I'm gonna finish. Maybe that orb has all of Luna's magic. That, that, that is that, that is what it. I could guess be. you could say she casted a great ball and took her magic. <laughs> No comment. Goodness instead, gracious. instead of just Great capturing her in magic. general. Yeah, but anyway, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna end this. So, uh, as they try to escape, they did escape. They land back to their world, and Stygian takes a piece out of the mirror so they don't get followed. Now, uh, Stygian feels he's at fault for this one. Like, um, he didn't act 
fast or he didn't do well. And Duna says, like, look at me, I'm powerless. Oh no, <laughs> my power has been sucked away into another dimension. And Eris said that she's going to sell off my power to the highest bidder in three days' time. Oh no, we need to make a plan, we need to make a plan. And Sejan just says, Princess Luna, what is the one good thing I'm known for doing? She answers, defeating the sirens. Close, but not quite. I didn't defeat the sirens, but I did assemble a team that did it. Now, Avengers, assemble! And with that, comic ends. Uh, Silver, what do you think? Like, you know what? I'm going to go for final thoughts. And you can elaborate more on the ending here. Well, there's not a whole lot to elaborate. I mean, the the real climax of this first issue is when Luna's magic gets stolen. After that, it is just get out as fast as you can. And I love their expression as they uh, flee. So we have a very high stakes, Luna's magic, although that will also become a sore spot in later issues. Uh, but we've got three days, so very limited time, and a uh, environment where basically Eris is in total control so there's really great dynamic between luna and stygian as they take responsibility for un, uh un sorting out this mess and uh i love stygian's answer it's like i built the team that stopped the sirens he's the he's the connector he's the uh nick fury yay <laughs> just give him an eye patch <laughs> yay or uh, amanda sure wallace some university has so. that well, then he needs to gain more than a few pounds. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, they, they made her thin. So, so, so wait. Though that made her less interesting. So wait, Silver, are you saying that uh, Stygian is assembling some kind of suicide squad? <laughs> or Luna's five. <laughs> uh, yes. There's so much more we can maybe, do. <laughs> maybe that's why Luna was so resentful during Sparkle 7. She's like, I did this and I did it in another dimension. <laughs> And nobody will get to know. But anywho, uh, th this is a great first issue, and I it really makes you invested. It has a great villain, honestly. I and it even makes uh, other issues retroactively more interesting. So I say it's a win all round. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Tara, what about you? Well, I enjoyed this comic from the beginning to end. As I was going through the comic, I'm thinking, oh, we're having this kind of plot, but then it always changed. And I like stuff that keeps me guessing and wondering where it's going to go because we have so many cliches at this point that it kind of gets old. But this one, it's like, oh, uh, Luna, they're just going to rescue Celestia and they're going to save her the Pony of Shadows. But all of a sudden, we got the Kingdom of Hearts realm and all of a sudden, it's like, wait, this is a casino full of villains. Like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And then they go up to the elevator. I'm thinking, okay, now we're going to get the Pony of Shadows. And then, no, we got a new character, Eris. Like, oh. I wasn't expecting that. And then Luna gets her magic train. Stitchian saves. I'm like, again, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> That's why I, I was, I'm, after this, I'm totally going to look at the next comic because I'm so interested in it. And when, it's, when I saw To Be Continued, I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's it. I want to see the next one. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, man. I agree with you there, man. Like, uh, I was with you when, okay, we're going to see the Pony of Shadows. Wait, what? No, wait, what? what? No, no Pony of Shadows? What? Yeah. But are you, are you done, man? Yep, I'm done. All right. And as for me, I, I like this comic a lot. This, this comic is awesome. Uh, Silver worded, worded it best, but I'm going to try and word it in my own way. Uh, the, the introduction is just awesome. We get to see Luna's downtime, but when we get to see the Pony of Shadows interacting, like, okay, this is just strange. What's going on here? What's going on here? And, yep, uh, I think the subversion of expectation is just awesome here because we were expecting the ponies of shadows but no we got Ares instead and luna losing her power being powerless and having stygian nah that's not that's not good that, that's not good. and having her power being sucked out and just having her no power for the rest of the series that's something that, that is something worth reading and yeah, people don't really, or other creatures don't really look at Stygian as a threat, but he has, he's packing a lot of heat. And yeah, can't wait, can't wait for more. Uh, the second issue is going to be more of the gathering of the heroes or villains, whatever you want to call it. 
And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, Silver, what are you going to do for next week's review? Well, it's time to hop back to the show and witness a shipping about to set sail. The future is being laid down as Pinkie Pie reunites with Cheese Sandwich Ah. in The Last Laugh. Can't wait, can't wait. Song is awesome too, song is awesome too. Wait, if it's called The Last Laugh, does that mean that's the last Pinkie Pie episode? That is a good question, is it, Silva? Actually, just flipping through, it really is the last uh, Pinkie Pie specific episode. Oh, wow. She'll share an episode with Twilight, so she's hardly uh, she's hardly removed from the show. But this is a Pinkie Pie specific episode. Yeah, yeah. like they're just going through titles, like oh, uh, d- between day and dawn, or something like that. Oh, what was it? Dark and dawn. Like oh, there's gonna be a last uh, Celestia and Luna episode. Oh, the previous one was the Last Crusade. There's gonna be <laughs> like, mm, like. There's a, they're, they're telling us something, guys. Like, mm, this might be the last season of Ponies. Mm. Uh, boys. Mm-hmm. But anywho, um, next, yeah, that's going to be next week's project. That's going to be next week's project. And like I said before, if you guys are really excited for uh, Nightmare Nights, you can always go buy the trade paperback. It's available. Uh, it's a lot of fun to read. And yeah, <laughs> Silver here preview uh, in behind the scenes. Um, we're wondering, are we going to continue on with part two? Because I I can't wait to review part two. Part two's gonna be fun, <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to man. I can't wait to. But we have to do other things in between responsibilities, you know. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at emissiongmail dot com. And you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at the <laughs> at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on both Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find and support my works on Patreon, MLP Silver Quill, and Kofi, just Silver Quill, all one word. And uh, if you are, hop on the YouTube and do a search for either After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear. And check out Equestria Daily every Wednesday, where I post uh, reviews and editorials. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go check him out, guys. He's really worth your time. And Tara, what about you? Well, the good people could find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Or they could also donate me on my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go do so, go do so. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyWithLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, Tristan, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am Tortera. And we'll just catch you next week with another fun episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Luna. Bye. You know what? I can't wait to review the second issue. This this comic is fun. This comic is a lot of fun. Well, for me, it's the fourth issue that'll get the most discussion. Ah, true that, true that. Well, for me, I think Angel's the true villain. Oh, we all know that. But we have to forgive him for a bit because he did reveal some revealing stuff. <laughs>